we are probably the first ones in the world that integrated ATEM switches outside Blackmagic Design. And uh, ever since then, we have been shading the cameras and controlling the ATEM switches. And today, we will take a look at how Colorfly works with Blackmagic cameras through ATEM switches. And we will also push into the mix a tangent dribble panel because having three trackballs to adjust lift, gamma, and gain on Blackmagic cameras is such an obvious addition that we could add to Colorfly to make it like perfect because on it we have faders that can adjust the iris. We have access to basically every setting like exposure, shutter speed, gain, etc. on the camera. But for the adjustment of lift, gamma, and gain, which are these uh, color parameters, we want to use trackballs, or some people are used to that uh, workflow. So we'll be looking at that in this video, and that's really exciting. So first, I want to take you through how the Colorfly works. For starters, as you already saw, we have these motorized faders, and I can use those to adjust the iris. And if I pull, by the way, just to let you see that there is full duplex here. That is, if you change it in the ATEM, it goes back to the panel. If you change it on the panel, it goes into the ATEM and from there on to the camera. Let's take a look at the color parameters of the ATEM. So we have gain right here. So gain is the parameters you see out in, um, in this color circle with these parameters. And for the first camera selected, I'm on that right now, the LMX camera, whatever that means. I can now adjust the uh, the red part of the gain. I can adjust the green. I can adjust the blue. If you want to have like higher resolution, or sorry, move quicker through the range, you can press these buttons and you get into a course mode that will move more quickly through the range. You can see the effect immediately on the picture. And actually, you don't need to move the the cursor very much through the color circle before you see an effect of this. All right. So um, yeah. So that was the gain. Let's just go to the lift. And uh, with lift, it's the same. Um, basically, you see the, um, the luminance parameters is moving here for lift. And if I press it down, then I have more course adjustment. So once again, you can kind of spoil everything by uh, having it in course mode and moving really quickly through the color circle. We have gamma. Same thing with the gamma. I'll just quickly go through some settings on this one so you can see the effect of it. Now, the tangent can do the same things. That's the whole point. So let's just bring this panel into the mix here. And um, this one is uh, on a 3D printed um, a pedestal. So it's like lifted up and it's just fitting so nicely with the color fly. It's really, um, you know, it's, it's a very beautiful little couple here. I feel like we should reset things, okay? So these buttons are for resetting. If you if you press this one, you would reset the value of lift. If you press this one, you have the, the luminance component and then you have red, green, and blue reset. So I'll just quickly reset the image by pushing these buttons and I have all values reset to standard now. Okay, so the encoder wheel here actually gives you, and this would correspond to pedestal on a camera. So you have this smooth, nice encoder that is doing your luminance work on the lift channel over here, but you also have the ball so you can shade the image to a little warmer tone or you can move it down to a greenish tone right there. Okay, let's just keep it like this because we are likely that we want to shade cameras, right? So here we have in the middle, we have the gamma, which is a sort of brightness adjustment. You could put it that way, I would say. But again, I'm not a colorist, um, so I don't know what I'm talking about. No, uh, I know how these parameters work. And you can now see that we are like pulling the image in the other direction to shade a little bit. We'll have a warm um, uh, black side of the image. Then in, in the midtones, we'll have it a little cooler here. And then finally, we can do things also on the gain. So... I don't know if we actually want to adjust that too much, but just keep it like this. All right, so now we have shaded the image. What about going to camera two? So we'll just go over to camera two, and then if we move along, you see the, the color fly and the camera selection here will make the tangent follow along. These two panels are coming together in this whole operation. The setup is handled by Reactor. Reactor is the software that runs on the color fly, not on my computer, not on anything else. It's running on the color fly, okay? Very, very powerful engine we have inside of this one. Very powerful software that makes it possible to run these things without having a separate computer like a Mac or PC connected into it. So it's a really great kit also for on the road work. But um, let's let's focus on what Reactor does here. You see that it has connection to itself, the Colorfly, but it also has connection to the Tangent Ripple panel. And these two are somehow bound together in a configuration that basically takes Colorfly and Tangent Ripple and make them work in, in unison. So for instance, that the, the camera selector will also move what the Tangent Ripple is actually um, controlling. 
Then we have a camera selector. This is something where you can basically just add a new camera and we have two cameras added from the ATEM switcher. We also have the ATEM switcher uh, in the mix here. And then th that's basically all we need to do. But I want to show you how we can like do this from ground up. So let's just quickly create a new project here and call it video example. Yes, yes and yes. And now we are starting over again. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is essentially to um, find the right configuration. So you see that different options. You can combine the Colorfly with an XC7 in case you want to add a joystick for PDC control. But you also have this Tangent Ribble example and we'll just pick that today. See, that brings up this dialog and it tells us that we need to add a new panel. So we do that and it already discovers on the network that we have a Tangent Ribble panel available on the network on this IP address. I'll tell you in a moment why it has an IP address, because it's a USB device, right? But let's just for a moment appreciate that it's there and we select it. So now immediately we have these two components um, selected. Uh, if I go to the simulator, you can see them visually. I think if we press fit all, we should be able to see both. Okay. All right, so here we have the simulator and there's the, the Colorfly and the Tangent Ribble. We have these two panels connected now. Now we need to add cameras. But before that, we need to add also our ATEM switches. So let's see if it's uh, being found on the network. I think it is. It is the Production Studio 4K that things are connected to. So let's just pick this guy. Select. And this is all I need to do. All right. So that is the connection to the ATEM switch. We need like this main connection. And then the next thing we need to do is to add cameras. I think... Maybe one way we can do it is to basically duplicate the device and then we'll go in here and then we'll select the, I think, what is it? Micro Studio Camera 4K. That's the one we are working with today. And then uh, in this case, uh, device ID are automatically incremented. The device IP address shall be the same as the ATEM switch we just added. So that's right, but let's just micro cam one. And then the camera ID is one. So that camera ID you just saw there is the camera ID that will bind it to camera number one, the LMX camera over here on on the, um, if you go into the software control of the ATEM switcher, then that's what you see right there. All right, um, it's still not on the color fly, but you also need to add it to the camera selector. The reason for that step is that, as you can see, Reactor is powerful enough to manage multiple panels. And sometimes you want to delegate the connection to multiple cameras out onto many different controllers and have it separately on those controllers. But now we just added it to this one and you see the camera is there. I select it. It means that my menu is coming up. And if I'm shading the camera, I should now see the, uh, by the way, I, we, we can actually adjust the iris of it, which you can see on the output from the recorded output from the camera. And then let's go over to the ASIM software control here. And there you can see how if I adjust the, um, the, the lift value of this one and let's bring up the, the Ah, the uh, full screen view of these. And now my trackballs are, I thought they were working, but they are not. There is actually just one bit of information that we need to add here. And that is inside the camera selector. The um, Because you can you can actually basically put together other cameras. It doesn't have to be black magic cameras. You could add in PDC cameras as the second camera if you want. Which means that each of these will have to have a specific configuration associated with them. And in this case, standard class is the kind of configuration that almost all cameras have. And we usually have only one. But in this case, I made an extra standard class configuration that includes the Ribble Tangent support. Tangent Rebel support. Thank you, Casper. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it would actually work now. Let's just pick it again. Let's go back and check the ATEM software control and you'll see the trackball is actually allowing us to move around and shade the black tones of this image to... I kind of like that. All right, that's cool. Let's add another camera. You see how easy this actually is? It's just really easy. Let's just add a bunch of these. Let's say duplicate, duplicate, and duplicate and just do it once again duplicate okay so now we have a bunch of cameras we need to probably just go and give them a different title we also need to correct the camera id here so that's number two let's pick this one make it camera number three call it camera oops not 13 but three and then we go to this guy call it four also four up here the the the, the final one Let's just have fun with that. Say, hey, this is camera five, but we make it number six inside the ATEM software. All right, so that's all good right now. We also need to add them over here. Little uh, pro tip, hold down the shift key as you add them 
And then I'm, I'm doing that right now. It means that it won't exit this dialog. And then for the final one, I will. So now we have this done. And now we also saw that it's pretty nice if we just get the tangent ripple support added in here for the individual camera configuration that we're choosing. The cool thing about having these device configs is that you can actually have kind of advanced and uh, simple configurations for your cameras instead of having a uh, like one catch-all solution. And uh, that's, of course, how we think our technology, making options for everybody. We are ready to try how this works, all right? So let's just uh, quickly go to the overview because you will see that as I'm moving faders, I'm actually adjusting the iris of all these cameras. And if I go to the second page right there, um, I have one fader and that would be camera six, right? So we just passed camera five here. And what happens if I adjust the lift? Yes, you see lift adjusted. What happens if I adjust it on the tangent? Yes, you also see, ah, no, I need to select it right there. All right, yes, because once again, I was confused by my own configuration. These over here, the channels, they are operated by the camera page here you have right here, going forth and back between this with the motorized faders and the lift is always coming with them. But the, the, camera you are controlling in this section, it depends on your camera selector. So now I have selected the, the fifth camera. And as I'm moving the trackball, you can see I'm adjusting the lift parameters on this one. Let's go through the four cameras. Camera number one is selected. I adjust the lift. Camera number two, I adjust the lift. Camera number three, I adjust the lift. Camera number four, I adjust the lift. Let's say that on camera number one, we have the perfect shading. So let's just work a little bit on that one. That's pretty neat. All right, so I can now use the copy button and then I go to the second camera and on my panel, I select the second camera. Now, it would be really cool if this camera selector could also kind of navigate the software, but unfortunately the software and the panel can't talk to each other like that. So it's it's not possible, but um, we select the second camera here and we can now copy the settings over. Okay, let's go to the third one, select the third one. We copy the settings over to everyone every one camera on our set, we can basically do this like that and then move the settings from one camera over to the other ones by the uses of the color fly and the tangents, uh, copy paste buttons. And we also have the reset buttons. We have all the um, luminance control by the encoders and we have the RGB color control with the trackballs, which are essentially moving the cursor of the color circles around in an XY grid. So that is color shading of Blackmagic cameras using Colorfly Tangent Dribble. I hope you liked it. I hope you got inspired. If you are crazy about cinematic color workflows, I'm sure this is the way you want to do it. If you're more into broadcast color workflows, then for sure there are other ways that you might prefer doing things. We have the uh, Colorfly that is uh, great for this kind of thing. We have the RCP form factor products, which are great for the traditional broadcast workflows. We provide options. We provide a choice and with us, there are always many ways you can do it. There's also always a mainstream way that we um, make available for everybody very easily using the Reactor software to easily add and connect cameras to your Skyhoy products. Final piece in the puzzle is to show you how the Tangent Rebel gets into a IP enabled device. This is happening in the packages section of your Colorfly. Packages is like pieces of software that runs on the Colorfly. One of them would be the Atom core that talks to the Atom switcher. Another one would be the hardware manager that picks up the fader inputs and sends back position. System manager is this UI. Reactor is the software that connects to the panel and to the switcher and brings these two together. And finally, the X panel hits. Hits means human interface device. And it's a word from the USB world that indicates that this is like a catch-all piece of software that will connect to different various USB devices that we have integrated. And they are documented on this wiki page. So on the Skahoy wiki, you can find information about how this works. Basically, uh, we have done, mostly for fun, a PlayStation joystick. We have added a, um, what is it called? Contour Shuttle Express Pro or something like that. And these, as an example, can be connected to a Blue Pill device, Blue Pill server or the, the Colorfly in this case. And uh, then they will essentially become uh, network enabled when you run the X panel hits uh, device. The Tangent Rebel is added to this mix and uh, mostly these devices are characterized by not having feedback. There's no colors on them. There's not a display that we need to manage. It's just input triggers from buttons, faders, trackballs, encoders, 
And that's kind of the simplicity associated with it. This wiki page has a lot of information about how this works. So uh, please go there and check it out. But essentially having this one working, then you see um, if, if you go into it, it tells you which is the starting port of devices connected to the Colorfly that is compliant with the types of devices that are documented on the wiki page. Secondly, we, um, yeah, so th those those are settings that you're finding in here. This view, the log view, is useful for you to know if actually a device is connected. So if I if I disconnect the Tangent Ribble, um, and then you, you see it gets disconnected, and it's now telling me something, I plug it in again, and then you'll see it's actually popping up here, because now it's discovered, and it is made into a raw panel device on port 9963. And this is why it pops up out here in the menu when I selected the panel.